morning, I'm a little bit out of my element here with you. I, I kind of feel like one of the Backstreet Boys with this thing on. I said that to some young people and they said, what's a Backstreet Boy? I've been away for a while. My wife and I live in Angola. She's seated here with our sons, Ephesus and Baruch. If you'd like to know where Angola is, there it is. Um, we serve the Lord's Church there. Um, we've been there for four years. Uh, this is quite different for me, this experience. Normally on a Sunday, I would be preaching to you in Portuguese. There would be someone up here next to me who'd be translating into a local language. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to have someone translate into Canadian for Matthew this morning, but I couldn't find anyone who was willing to do that for me. So, we're stuck with me. Um, I grew up in this congregation here at Castle Rock. Uh, six months to 18 years of my life, I was here. A uh, tear came to my eye last week when Travis was talking about some of the people that, that I remember from when I was very little, um, Roger Self and Max Starnes and them. Uh, so Castle Rock supports our work in Angola. You all help us do what we do through your contributions but I also want you to know this place is very special to us, uh, this family here. Our history here and the relationships we have with you are very meaningful for us. And so we're very thankful to have this opportunity to be with you here this morning. So we live in Angola. Uh, there's a lot I would like to share with you about Angola, but I just don't have the time this morning. So get out your smartphones. Don told you to turn them off, but I want you to get them out August 5th, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I've asked for more time to be able to share with you about what we're doing. So please be sure uh, to be there if, if at all possible. I'd love to be able to share more stories with you about what we're doing in Angola. Okay. What is a missionary? So I've said I'm a missionary in Angola, but what is a missionary? Where do we find that word in Scripture? We don't. Excellent. The preacher is playing with you this morning. We do not find the word missionary in Scripture. It comes from Latin, and it means someone who's sent to do the work of God. So I've said I'm a missionary in Angola, but what I want to convince you of this morning is that we are all missionaries. We're all sent to do God's work. Think about what is our mission. Well, simply put, we seek to glorify God by living godly lives. Or, if you prefer to borrow some language from Castle Rock, our mission is is to belong, become, and bless. We belong to Christ, we become like Christ, and then we bless others through a life lived out the way Christ lived. This is our mission. So although I live in Angola, and you live here in Colorado, we are all missionaries. We are all living out God's mission. The only difference that I see is really a matter of address. I live in Africa, you live in the United States of America, but we are all living out the mission that God has called His people to fulfill. Now, I, this is not the first time I've done this, so I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but uh, what you do is still pretty different from what I do. Well, I want to challenge you this morning and maybe give you a different way to think about the Christian life, because I truly believe that what I do in Angola and what you do here, we are part of the same mission, and the differences are much smaller than we think. So this morning we're going to share a bit about a different way of thinking of the Christian life. In the Bible, we hear Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I love this metaphor, the way. When you come to Acts, you find that the early church referred to themselves as the way, at times, and I want to develop this metaphor with you, and we'll look at Philippians 3 and 4 here in a minute and see how Paul spoke to the Philippians church and think of it through this lens. I like this metaphor because in Angola we travel a lot. I added it up for you this morning and figured out that we have averaged about 30,000 miles per year over the last four years. Angola is four and a half times the size of Colorado, so we are always coming and going. Uh, if you imagine the drive from Fort Collins to Durango, has anyone done that? Fort Collins all the way to Durango? That's like a trip to the capital for us. I do that about every other month. Now imagine that same stretch scattered with potholes that range in size between a cantaloupe and a Volkswagen. 
Now you're getting the idea of, of what travel is like in Angola. We travel a lot, and I have many, I've had many years behind the wheel thinking about how our Christian life is like a journey. We can go backwards or forwards. Sometimes we hit detours. We encounter obstacles along the way. Uh, sometimes parts on the car get worn and break down. I look young, but I'm beginning to understand that a little bit better uh, through the years. But our life is very similar. Our Christian life is very similar to a journey. So this metaphor of the way in thinking about Christian life is the lens through which I want to look at Philippians with you. We are on a journey, or Paul might say we're on our way home. Philippians 3 verse 20, Paul says our citizenship is in heaven. This world is not the end, but we are on our way to somewhere else. So since we're on a journey this morning together, I want to share three bits of wisdom about travel in Africa with you. The first is you always have to travel with a purpose. Travel with a purpose. Let's look at Philippians 3, uh, verses 8 and then 12 through 14. Paul says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is on a journey, or Paul might say he was running a race, always headed for the goal. And the goal is that upward call, that citizenship in heaven, where one day we'll go on to live with Christ forever. So thinking about our Christian life, let's expand this metaphor a bit more. I mentioned how much we travel in Angola. It is so important that I always have a destination, a purpose. What am I trying to accomplish? Because along the way, you never know what you may find. I've had more flat tires than I can count. I've had the lug nuts rattle loose and fall off the car. We nearly lost the wheel. I dropped a piece of my transmission on the road, had to crawl under the car and strap it back together with duct tape and zip ties. You know, just, it's absurd what obstacles we may find and that's not unique to my Angolan experience. I know that you all will encounter obstacles in your journey too. But what is it that gets us to our final destination? It's knowing what our goal is. Sometimes I just want to go home. Lord, please help me. I just have to get this truck to roll in to my home. It's our destination that gives us strength. An example from the Angolan church, here are four young men whom I uh, love very much. I will translate their names for you into English. This is Peter, Gideon, Jeremiah, and Paul. The first church we were a part of planting in Angola, uh, my teammate Danny and I, uh, it was difficult. We would alternate Sundays. One week I would preach, and he would keep the drunkards uh, from being too disruptive at the back of the church, and then the next week we'd switch. I would preach or he would preach and I'd be on, on drunk duty, just trying to maintain enough order that people could pay attention. And we prayed for over a year, God, send us one man, one man who does not have this struggle with alcoholism. We prayed and God brought us four young men. We were standing around after worship one Sunday, Peter, Paul, Gideon, and Jeremiah, and they were teasing, each other, teasing uh, Gideon because he was the only one that didn't have a name that came from the Bible. And Danny and I realized, now here's some potential. So we got these four guys together. We started preparing them to help us lead in the congregation. It turns out Jeremiah is a gifted teacher. Gideon is a gifted song leader. Paul is neither of those things, but he was always there. If the church needed help with whatever it was, he was present. If he forgot his Bible at a Bible study, he would go home, even if it were 45 minutes away, to come back and be ready to go. His persistence was his quality. Well, God answered our prayers, and shortly after, we received a man who came from a, a nearby town to come and help us share the gospel where we were. He joined us in the leadership of the church, and he didn't share our trust and our relationship with these young men and decided he didn't want them 
leading worship anymore. So I love this man, but sometimes, side note here, the obstacles that we encounter don't always come from outside. Sometimes they come from within. And unfortunately, Jeremiah, our teacher, and Gideon, our song leader, and Peter, they fell away. And my heart aches for them. They have started to come back to us and to be a part of the church family again. But their giftedness and using that gift wasn't enough to give them that persistence that they needed to reach the goal. Paul, on the other hand, he stuck with it. He and I had many conversations about the struggles he was having, but he's still with us. And now the leadership has brought him back in and allowed him the opportunity to use some of the gifts that God is growing in him. But it was his persistence that saw him through to the end. So thinking about our journey together, this path that we are on as Christians, we have to know where we're headed. If we know where we're headed, we can do what it takes to arrive at that journey. If I know I'm headed home and I have to crawl under that car and rig it back together with duct tape and zip ties, so be it. I'm going home. And if Paul knows that this is not just about using the talents and gifts God has given us, but this is about being a part of God's plan and traveling a journey together, he has the persistence he needs to stick with it. And whatever struggles it are, they are in your lives. It's the persistence that we have through Christ, the strength that he gives us that will hold us through to the end. Paul said in Philippians 4, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. It's that persistence on the journey. Second lesson, we have to travel well prepared. Uh, Let's look at what Paul says in Philippians 3. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted it loss for the sake of Christ. Think of how well prepared Paul was for the mission that God sent him on. Paul was trained in Jewish law, and yet at the same time a Roman citizen who spoke the language and knew Greek customs. Paul was well prepared for what he did, and yet at the same time he said, That, okay, that's okay, but I'm looking to God for what I need. I'm looking to Christ to fulfill His mission in me, not just this preparation that I've done. And I think sometimes we forget that our preparation is not only what we do to prepare, but also what God is already doing in us. Again, my experience traveling in Angola, this vehicle is well prepared. I outfitted it with new bumpers and a suspension. I can take any pothole you throw at me. Before we get ready to go on a trip, I load two spare tires, an air compressor, two jacks, you know, fluorescent vest. We carry duct tape and zip ties, of course, and a whole manner of replacement parts so that whatever we encounter on the road, we are ready for it. However, also before every journey, we pause and we pray. And we ask God to watch over us on the journey because all it takes is one careless driver. And all that preparation that I did is worthless. In our Christian lives, we got to think about how has God already prepared us? How is God preparing us now? Maybe not in the ways we expect. I want to tell you the story of Domingush, who's here on the left with a couple of our, with his family and our summer interns. Domingush is a new believer. And uh, his father was a preacher, but he grew up and was very uh, disenfranchised with the church. He sees a lot of hypocrisy in Angolan church leaders, and I'm sure that is not a unique Angolan problem. And so Domingush didn't want to have anything to do with the church, and he met my teammate Nathan, and they began studying the Bible together, and Nathan showed him, you know, the Christian life that we live together, this journey that we're on. We don't have to live it as if we have no problems. We can share those with one another, and they began sharing their struggles. We invited Domingush to come and be a part of an accountability group that the men on our team have, where we just share the difficulties that we encounter with each other. You know, I share how many times I lost my temper this week, and, and let's pray for each other and help each other through this. And because of that, Domingush went back to Scripture again, and he started studying, and he decided, you know what? This is the kind of Christian family that I want to be a part of. 
And now he's thinking about how he can use his gifts to serve. And Domingo says, you know, I, I can't do what you do, Robert. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I tell him I'm not either, so it's okay. But, you know, he says, but you know what? I've been playing basketball with the guys down at the army base for the last few months. So what he did is he started inviting them between these pickup basketball games to sit down and just read a chapter of the Bible together. Just simply that. Just simply sit down. Hey, I'm going to read this chapter. You know, maybe we'll talk about it, then we'll go play another game. You know, Domingos is preparing himself for Christian service. He is an avid student of the Bible. He reads anything he can get his hands on. At the same time, he's looking at how God has prepared him to serve and looking at his gifts. So, second bit of wisdom from Africa, we have to prepare for the journey. But I want to challenge you not just to seek that formal preparation uh, that we typically think of, but also look at how God is already preparing you to serve where you are. Philippians 4.19, God will supply every need of yours according to His riches. Let's examine ourselves and look at how we can serve where we are in the way, with the ways God has already prepared us. Third bit of African wisdom, never, ever, ever travel alone. Never travel alone. You know, at the end of, uh, toward the end of Philippians 3, Paul said, let those of us who are mature be of the same mind. And what is that same mind? It's this journey that we're on together to reach our final goal. We don't do this alone. Uh, in, uh, I traveled about six hours south of us alone, to visit a church and do some teaching there. And when I was leaving, the minister said, well, who's riding with you back to Wambu where you live? And I said, well, I'm, I'm traveling by myself. That won't do. He rode with me halfway, three hours halfway, and caught a bus back and arranged for someone to meet me at that midway point and ride with me the rest of the way and catch a bus back to his home. Because you don't travel alone in Africa. Anything could happen, and you might be under the car for days frustrated with the duct tape, trying to figure out how to stitch it all back together again so you just don't go alone. Well, here's the great thing about this Christian journey that we're on. We're not traveling it alone. You know, think about why are you here today? Why, why did we come together today? Okay, to hear a sermon? Well, if you didn't know, the sermons are all online. You don't have to be here to hear this message this morning. I know some of you are thinking, but Matthew is so much better live than he is, you know, in a recording. That, that may be. But we didn't come to hear a sermon. We didn't come, you know, you can sing songs at home. You can pray at home. You can take the Lord's Supper at home. You know, my family has done that from time to time because we didn't have a church to fellowship with. All of that does not require you to be here in this building. But think about why we're instructed in Scripture to come together. The verse I heard growing up was from Hebrews 10, not neglecting to meet together, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, do not neglect to meet together. Why? Encouraging one another. Encouraging one another. We sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to encourage one another. We come to hear a lesson together so that we can encourage one another to live out this life of faith. No one should live the Christian life alone. I share one more story with you from Angola. The young man in the picture with my family here is Manel. Uh, we met Manel when we began construction on our home. He lived in the neighborhood. Manel is an orphan of the Angolan Civil War. He's 26 years old. Uh, he, uh, his mother left when he was young and he never saw her again. Um, he lived for a while with different family members uh, but wasn't well cared for. And eventually in his teenage years, he left and sought work elsewhere found work as a guard. Uh, when Angolans begin the construction process, we have to have someone that's always on site to make sure sacks of cement don't walk off on their own. So Manel caught on with a few different people. When we began to build our house, he approached me and he explained what he was doing and offered his services. And I checked his references and said, okay, well, let's give this a try. Manel began work with us. I immediately saw his character. He is a hard worker, responsible. When, he, when I gave him Ten bucks to buy a sack of cement, he bought me the change, and I expected none. You know, he's a wonderful man. We invited Manel into our home for supper. We fed him a cheeseburger. After he ate that cheeseburger, with tears in his eyes, he, he told us his story. He said, I never imagined that I would be sharing a meal in the home with Americans. 
You know what he meant was he's been alone for so much of his life. He's been on this journey alone that began in the Catholic Church and had various obstacles along the way. And now someone has come alongside him to walk this journey. We threw Manel a birthday party. We gave him the first gift he had ever received in wrapping paper. Uh, We helped Manel uh, when his family found his sister, whom they hadn't seen in 15 years. We helped arrange for Manel to go and visit her. You know, what we've done is we've we've shared the joys and the sufferings of Manel's journey with him. Um, I had the privilege of giving Manel his first Bible, and now he reads his Bible every day. Every morning I find him outside reading the Word. He asks me questions about Jesus. I ask him questions about American uh, Angolan culture. You know, when we have this relationship together, Manel's story is still ongoing. You know, the end is not yet written. But I tell you his story, partly because it's a good story, but partly because I want you to see this is evangelism. And it's evangelism that any one of us can do. What I've done is I've come alongside Manel and I've said, Manel, you're not traveling this road alone. Let's walk together for a while. Let's explore what it means to be a follower of Christ together. You know, Never travel alone. We think of evangelism as, you know, maybe Bible studies and sermons and preaching, but really it's joining someone in their journey for a while and helping them realize what does it mean to be on this journey together. So I want to challenge you to think about that this morning. What does it mean to never travel alone? What can we do? Who can you find in your community, whether it's across the street or at work, who can you find to walk with? for a time on this journey. Three bits of Angolan wisdom about travel. Always travel with a purpose because it's that final destination that will keep us true to the course. Always travel well prepared, but remember it's not enough. We also have to consider how is God working in us to prepare us for the journey. And then lastly, never travel alone. We're not in this Alone, we have each other and take advantage of the fact that we have people traveling with us. I want to conclude by teaching you a a short phrase in Portuguese. Are you ready? If we were in Angola, after the sermon concluded, we would dismiss row by row. We'd all go to the back and I would shake every one of your hands and I would say, Estamos juntos. Estamos juntos. And that means we are together. I can translate that for you, but it just doesn't quite catch everything that it really means. When we say, estamos juntos, we mean we're together. It means I'm here for you, and you are here for me. We're here to help one another. We're here, we are of one mind. We have one goal. Estamos juntos, we are together. This morning, we've come here to encourage one another. I want to thank you for the encouragement that you are to me and to my family more than just your financial contributions, the fellowship that we enjoy while we're here is such a blessing. Um, and, and for that, I, I want to thank you. I'm encouraged by what Castle Rock is doing in the H2H groups and the fellowship that you all share. Um, in my humble opinion, knowing this congregation for 30 years, that's always been a strength of Castle Rock, the fellowship we share with each other. That's why we're here. Remember that we're in this together. And I want to remind you that if you have any needs this morning, that's why we're here. So we're going to sing a song in a moment. If you have something that we can encourage you in, this is a chance for you to share that with us. That's why we're here. So remember, always travel with a purpose, travel well prepared, and never travel alone. We're here for one another. And let's remember these things throughout the week as we seek to carry out our mission wherever it is we are. Let's stand and sing together.